All right. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Pick My Soldiers Facebook Live. As always, we've got Patrick Crowley here. Hello. Rex Keo. We got a very, very fun topic that we're going to revisit today. Mm, the Ca double down. Caused a little buzz last time. The so. rare double down. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're pretty pumped. This is, um, you know, it's a pretty, pretty, I don't want to say contentious topic, but. Um, Solar Edge versus Enphase, which one's better? Uh, it does tend to be uh, a talking point in the industry, so we were told we missed a couple points last yeah. time, so we're going we're gonna to do a deeper dive. Wow. <laughs> Way too deep. Uh, no, but really, it's, it's awesome that um, you know, this, this topic is driving some conversation. Yeah. We definitely love it when people engage with us, ask questions, offer counterpoints. Uh, we're here to kind of expand not just our knowledge or not just your knowledge rather but our knowledge of the yeah, solar industry make absolutely. it make it clear and, and and concise so um shoot them our way yeah. if you have contentions with this one again absolutely we'll, yeah we'll do a third we we had some <laughs> comments directly from solar edge from Enphase, from installers from yeah. homeowners so yeah everybody seemed to have opinions that's great number 71 here wow we are we're getting up there mm -hmm. as always ask us anything write us a comment shoot us an email give us a call we will answer any and all of your questions Let's get into it. Let's go. Okay, so the ultimate inverter showdown. So these were kind of the talking points we had last time. We're gonna maybe touch on a couple of new ones today, but functionality, warranties, the monitoring systems, and the bankability. Those are kind of the core topics we'll get into a little bit here. Yep, I think that covers it. So maybe a quick, because some people probably didn't see the part one, but quick quick recap on functionality of these Functionality, products. pretty simple. End phase microinverter. Uh, which is converting um, the DC to AC at the, at the panel level. You're not going to have a central inverter on your house. Uh, a lot cleaner looking, so to speak, because you don't have to run the conduit, have the, the inverter box, all that. Yep. Or the inverter, I should say. Mm -hmm. You have a small junction box next to the panel box, but it's pretty, pretty small in, right. in all things considered. Uh, but as far as functionality, um, power is isolated to the panel level. For both systems. That's true. Yep. That's true. Uh, because Solar Edge has what are called optimizers, which isolate... The, uh, the power production to the panel level. Right. Um, but the difference there is they're doing the conversion of DC to AC down in that inverter. Correct. So they're yep. just isolating the panel, then there is still that central conduit. And we'll get into the, the you know, a little bit deeper on the next slide, I think, yeah. of why that's a difference there. Yeah, that's just a really high level, yeah, yeah. one to two. Thank yep. you. Thanks for giving me the software. <laughs> for sure. Uh, warranties, again, um, you know, they both have pretty strong warranties. Um, Solar Edge comes with a standard 12-year warranty that often gets extended to 25 years. Yeah. Enphase does come with a standard 25-year warranty. I don't think we have another slide on this one, so we're gonna we're gonna do the deep dive on this part now. Let's get into it. Um, Solar Edge's warranty includes labor right. for the full 25 years mm -hmm. if you get it. Enphase. Two years, right? Two years. Yeah. So what that means is, um, if you know. Year five, one of these microinverters from Enphase does go out, Enphase would not cover the labor costs for that. Your installer, which on our platform, most of our installers have minimum 10 year, you know, up to 25 year workmanship warranties, that labor is covered. Right. So homeowner, you're still fine as long as the installer is gonna cover that. In the unfortunate scenario where that installer would go out of business, you know, yeah. year five, Enphase would not cover that cost, Solar Edge would cover that cost. Yeah, so like yeah, to your point though, it's that two year might be alarming, but when coupled with the workmanship warranty and mm -hmm. the fact that they have the parts warranty, yep, you're pretty much covered. I would say know? so. And yeah. I mean, honestly, if if uh, you know the installer did go out of business and you needed somebody new to come out in ten years to replace a microinverter, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not a huge expense. Right. So, but there is a difference there. Two year labor with end phase. And you got the full labor um, with Solar Edge. Mm -hmm. um, monitoring systems. Talk a little about those. Sure. Uh, both, both have monitoring systems. Both pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, consumption level monitoring is an option for both. I'm not sure if they come standard or what the capacity they, is. There. You those do are, have to pay yeah. more for consumption, I right? Believe. And I do. I don't know if this has changed recently, but panel level monitoring with Enphase, mm -hmm. I think, is under the assumption that it yep. you had to pay extra. But I don't know if it's standard yeah, now. So and these things are ever evolving too. Right. So. For sure. And but, but real real quick on the consumption level monitoring. So oh. there are. Um, I, it is an added expense. There are some installers. Shout out to 
New York Power Solutions, mm. uh, one of our installers in New York. Uh, they include it on all of our projects for free. So that's something they, they offer to all of our clients, um, but you can get it if it's not already being offered to you at an additional cost. Have to, we'll have to put in the comments what the actual uh, number is to upgrade that. But um, the panel level monitoring. So we were told by Enphase that that is now included. Oh, okay. But last week we paid for that, so I don't know if that's <laughs> actually the case is it, yet. Is it one of those things that's it's it, included if you pay for it? Well, <laughs> I think it, it's no. pro hopefully it's in the works to right. be included. Right. I'm not quite sure. I can't verify that yet. Yeah. Um, but I was told um, that that is included. And now. I mean, even with with both of these things, the consumption level monitoring and the panel level monitoring, it's very very nominal cost relative to the yeah. cost of your system. You're talking system. We're, 250 dollars is what we're referring yeah. to. Yeah. And if so. you're yeah, I mean, if you're paying. Twenty-five thousand, or whatever it might be, right? Or you're going with a loan. It's going. You're not really going to notice that, right? Um, and then when you get into the actual platforms, they're different, but mm -hmm. they give you the same information. Right. So I mean, once you get accustomed to a user interface, I think for sure they're the same in yeah. a lot of respects. Uh, I'm more familiar with Solar Edge, just because we spend more yeah. time on that one in our in our post sale process. But right. uh, and I do like it. Uh, End phase is, you know, I think just as good. I just don't yeah. have as much experience with it. For sure. And then the last core point we'll, we'll touch on is going to be the bankability of these companies here. So this was kind of the, I would say, the, the yeah. biggest comment that we got that we did not really highlight in the last segment. But SolarEdge um, has a single point of failure. Uh, it does have a central inverter, like Patrick was saying. Mm -hmm. All of that um, you know, DC energy comes down to the central inverter, and it does convert it in one point. So if that inverter were to go out, the entire system would be shut down. With Enphase, because that conversion is happening up on the roof under each panel, if one were to go out, the whole system is not down. It's just going to be that one panel. Right. So talk us through, you know, what's what does that really mean? Yeah. Well, it, it really it really depends on your installer and how quick you can get a person back out to the house. Yep. Um, Which our installers, you're talking, you know, two days. If it's a situation like this, you know, it'd be either same day or next day. They're, right. they're going to get out there. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think, one of the values of, of our platform is yeah. recurring business <laughs> for these installers. We can help right. kind of get those people out there. Uh, if your installer isn't so concerned about your system five years down the line, yeah, you know, it, it can, we've heard some horror stories where it could be weeks, yeah. months, you know, so it's, it's, it can be bad if the whole thing goes down. And that, right. with Solar Edge, like you mentioned, um, if it goes out, it's out. You're not producing any power for solar. You're getting charged for everything from the grid yep. until you get that thing back up and running. And whatever that timetable is with your installer, right? Um, again, covered warranties and all that, but sure. Still, the time lost is going to equal money lost, yep. and you're not going to be able to recoup. Absolutely. That. Um, with end phase, you see a, you know, just a percentage, probably mm -hmm. a relative loss. If you lost, you know, five percent of your inverters, you would lose five percent of your production, right. five percent of your credits, something yep. to that effect. That's an oversimplification, but. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say it's a benefit to lose your whole system, but you will 100% know when yeah. your whole system goes <laughs> down. Right, um, that's true. With Enphase, it might be harder to diagnose without panel level monitoring if you don't have that. So it could kind of creep up on you a little bit. Yeah, if you lost like, one panel, you might be not right. so sure if the system is producing true. or not. Mm -hmm. I think that most people would prefer to keep 95% of their production and then figure it out in three weeks' time rather than lose all of their production and then... right. Not At happens. least if, if it was yeah. for three weeks, for sure. But if it's that you know half a day or one day, you know that's that's not so bad. But yeah. so that that is the biggest difference. Um, you know, single point of failure with Solar Edge, and you have this distributed architecture um, yeah. with End Phase, where they're all completely independent and converting. Yeah. yeah, and I think that the the biggest point that was made to us, I think from I don't know if it was something that were from End Phase directly, yes. or it was mostly that it's just you're going to if it's out for a week. And you, it's going to add you, up. You do the math on your kilowatt hour. It's not. It's not an insignificant for sure charge. You know, think yeah. about what you pay for solar, or think about what you pay for your utility. Yeah, that thing's out for two weeks. Could be could be a hundred bucks. 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 bucks from the utility, and there's yeah. no way to get that back. Right. So absolutely. That's well, absolutely and true. and again, just to kind of touch on what you said, that's why it's very important you choose the right installer that you're going with. You go with Pick My Solar through one of our installers. You know, obviously we are monitoring this as well, and we're going to strongly encourage them to get out there very quickly. Yeah. Um, just an example, we, we did have um, a situation where it wasn't realized. About a week did go by, and we did re get that customer reimbursed. The installer kind of saw the severity of that situation, so you know there there is always that as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's we try and do right by people in those situations. Absolutely. Most most, most installers, if they're kind of worth, worth their 
they're waiting to learn. Right. They'll, they'll <laughs> for, do the same. For sure. Um, so, yeah, this was, uh, I guess I skipped ahead a little bit here, so just kind of reiterating what we had just discussed there. Nice picture of the solar edge inverter there. Um, okay, so again, I got way ahead of us on yeah. these slides, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One other thing um, to touch on, I, I didn't mention on that labor portion of the warranty. This was a fairly recent change uh, from Enphase. I think it was two years ago, I think, is when they um, changed that their uh, labor is only included for those two years. And I did get some messages from installers that were not happy about that switch because, um, you know, they had had customers in the contract and given them, you know, 10, 25 year warranties with the assumption that that labor is going to be covered for that. And then that kind of got pulled out from under them. So now right. they were left with that added cost. And I know, you know, some of those installers are very hesitant to use Enphase and that's not because the product is not a great product, yeah. but just because they are concerned about having to cover that labor cost. Um, and we do see a fair amount of installers. Um, they will charge a premium for Enphase. And I have to kind of assume that it's because they, they need to be able to cover these labor costs in the future. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you mentioned at the top of the show that you didn't want to say contentious. I think divisive mm -hmm. is a good word for this. And, and it really will come down to, in a lot of cases, um, installers preferences sure when their history within their history with these two products um, you know if somebody's had to make a whole bunch of labor calls for end phase yeah they're not likely to want to do it again but if right. that a different installer used end phase and they have a whole bunch of customers who you know were happy with the, their ability to you know put panels all over their house or you know mm -hmm. there's certain flexibility that end phase offers is it harder with solar edge or things like right. that you know for sure um, so a lot of it is preference and there are differentiating factors which i think was something we did gloss over a little bit in part mm -hmm. one right. um, so we're trying to highlight those a little bit more while you know still being agnostic i i, I, I yep. would be confident recommending either of these products absolutely uh, if you never wanted to lose power i would tell you go with that face yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be something i would encourage you to do right you know yeah absolutely um a couple other things that i don't think we had the slides for but um another another thing about solar edge they have a pretty pretty cool product that is available now, uh, integrated EV charger. So they have a couple different models. So if you are, you know, you have an EV or you're thinking about getting one, you can integrate the EV charger into your solar inverter. It's just one less piece of hardware. You know, a little yeah. bit leaves you a little bit more space on your on your uh, panel box as well. Yeah. So I know that's been a pretty cool um, you know add-on that a lot of our customers have liked at least. Yeah. Slap it in your garage. Yeah. Account for your EV usage in your solar. 100%. Yeah. They're, they're really going for the complete package with that. With oh, the yeah. Product. Absolutely. Um, and then another um, Is thing. Is it cost premium? We shouldn't. That's true. Yeah. yeah. It's about, about, about $1,000 is, is pretty standard that they're adding yeah. to that. I mean, for an EV outlet and an EV charger That's and the labor, you're probably getting yep. to the same thing. I, I'd say it's probably a little bit less expensive, actually, going with uh, the Solar Edge one. And you and get it's the a level, tax credit on it. Because it's the tax your, credit on it. Project. It's a level two charger. Pretty, pretty powerful That's stuff. That's a good there. product. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that we don't have on the slides here, but um, you know, a, a benefit to Enphase in the early hours in the morning That's and at the end of the day, it doesn't need as much power to turn on the system. So you actually can pick up a few kilowatt hours in the morning and in the evening mm -hmm. that you might not be able to pick up with Solar Edge, just because the Solar Edge is a central inverter, it needs a certain amount of power to actually power on the system. Right. Likewise, at night, that sun's going down, it might cut off a little bit early. Obviously, when we're doing the designs of these systems, we're accounting for all of that. But just something to you know to highlight that Enphase does have um, you know that that functionality that helps out a little bit. Yeah, very good point. And then you you briefly touched on this, but just more flexibility on module locations. So you know, Solar Edge obviously there's a string involved. Mm -hmm. you, you can't put you know six different arrays onto one central inverter. So dep depending on kind of the roof layout. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. That's a it's a great point. You know, if you have um, either different azimuths, which is the direction of the roof plane, right? Um, you don't want to put those on the same string. Mm -hmm. So each one of those inverters, I believe, has two strings on them. Yes. Right. And so you can, you know, and, and with the optimizers, it's more flexible than it used to be, or it is with the SMA or yep. a product like that. Um, 
But if you have, let's just say, a whole bunch of dormers. Six different arrays. Yeah, yeah. hipped roof mixed with a gabled roof and a yeah. garage and things like yeah. that. You might want to go in phase. Just And that's also going to make it really easy on your installer. Yeah, that's or, for sure. Relatively easy. More right. so than, than you would with a, uh, a Solar Edge product. But mm -hmm. um, Solar Edge does have that capacity. I would just opt for in phase. Right. Scenario just makes like it a that. bit easier. Yeah. Um, another highlight, um, you know, with Enphase, it, you can, let's say down the line, you wanted to add panels to your system. Uh, you do have a little bit more flexibility with that, just because with Solar Edge, you're going to have that central inverter that has a capped capacity. So right. depending on how much leeway you have of what your inverter capacity is towards what your current um, solar system size is, you cannot exceed that capacity by you know, X amount. So you are capped right. with what you can add. That's a good point, because you mentioned it takes a certain amount of panels for Solar Edge to turn on, yep. and each one of those inverters also is going to have a cap toward the top for that you sure. can't go over. Yep. So there is a Goldilocks scenario when right. you're designing a system with Solar Edge that you want to get the right inverter for that job. So yep. adding four or five panels down the line would not want to... We really don't recommend that to begin with. Yeah, so I mean, thinking well, about getting an yeah. electric vehicle. Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> account for that yeah. usage. Build, yeah, build the system of your dreams now. <laughs> yeah. Because there is added, obviously added cost down the line if, if you wanted to add to that system. It's doable. Yeah. Um, but if you're thinking about, you know, added usage now, might as well kind of just take care of yeah. that. Because in most cases, too, what we see is people don't want to add another six, seven kilowatts. They want to add, you know, one Two to three kilowatts. or something right. like exactly. that. Exactly. And, yep. you know, just economies of scale, your price per watt is not going to be nearly as good if you did it all at the same time. For sure. Um, yeah, good point. But, you know, if it happens all the time. You know, yeah. especially now, we see people who went solar with us three, four years ago say, hey, I just got an electric vehicle. Yep. My bill's getting a little out of control. What yep. do we do? And then I just pray they have infinite. <laughs> <laughs> right, for sure. Um, and then another thing, which I, I have never come across this, but it's, it is possible. Um, Enphase does allow mismatched wattages of panels. Interesting. So let's say you have, you know, and this kind of would probably be more geared towards an expansion system, but let's say... Really you, unique situation. Yeah, yeah. but it, you know, it, it's possible. So let's say you have a, a 330 watt, you know, solar panel system now on your roof with Enphase. And in three years, you wanted to add a couple, you know, 350 watt modules. You could do that with Enphase. Could not do that with Solar Edge. We actually did have a customer recently uh, who who asked us if we could just use 12 or so panels he had in his garage. <laughs> nice. So I will dig that guy up and let him know <laughs> we can we can do that with Enphase. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, I think. Oh, one one other thing that I did want to touch on. So uh, the bankability was mm -hmm. that four core point, uh, fourth core point that we, we had on that first slide. So if you look at the history of the companies, Solar Edge has been a profitable company. I would say, you know, for a, a much longer period of time than Enphase. Enphase did spearhead this whole microinverter industry. So, you know, they, they were kind of putting a lot of money into R&D, yeah. I'm sure, and just kind of competing against Solar Edge, competing against SMA, yeah, you know, time, SMA made it very difficult player. for them to turn a profit. They have turned two uh, profitable quarters in a row, so they've shown that. That's that's a very good sign. Um, but just looking at the companies as a whole, yeah, you gotta you gotta kind of give the edge to Solar Edge in terms of being a more uh, profitable company just for a longer period of time. The history, yeah, the history is there. That's really not up for dispute. Yeah, I think what um, you know an Enphase advocate would say, and I think it's a reasonable point, is if you look at where the industries have the adoption of not only microinverters generally, but the string inverters shifting to optimizers. Mm -hmm. Enphase now offers a built-in microinverter to Solaria and SunPower, two of the, probably the two highest efficiency American-made panels. Sure. Actually, definitely the two highest efficiency yeah. American-made panels. For sure. Two of the highest efficiency panels on the market. So you can look forward and say, well, maybe the industry is going more towards the way of the microinverter, and the built-in microinverter is something that's going to become more and more commonplace. Yeah. And if that's the case, Enphase has a huge leg up. Yep. And these two profitable quarters back to back would be, uh, I think, pretty relatively significant in, right. in uh, you know, their bankability going forward. Right. And those two partnerships obviously would be very significant because I don't think, well, Sol Solaria I don't think is going anywhere, but they're still pretty young. Yeah. SunPower's a stalwart they're... in the industry. I'd be surprised right. to see them um, have any major, major downturn anytime soon. Right. For sure. Absolutely. Well, I, I'd say we covered quite a few points. I think that's probably yeah. the end of it. As always, so pick my solar. If you haven't haven't heard of us already, you know we run a solar marketplace. Uh, if you're thinking about going solar, come to us. We will do an independent design and analysis of your system and your home, 
And then we have a vetted network of installers that we work with that we have bid on the project and we're gonna make it super easy for you and, and help you out if it makes sense to go solar. Yep. And phase solar edge, both both great products. You want. Yeah. If we miss anything, do not hesitate. We we will yep. we'll have see. a part three if yeah, you need yeah. to. We'll, we'll see you on part three. <laughs> okay. Thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.